During the weekends, I, along with my sister and friend, usually went to town around 20 minutes away to go out and eat. It was a busy area, so there were many people on the streets asking for money. After a lot of fizzy drinks, we were walking to the nearest restroom, and my friend accidentally kicked over one of the man's pot of money, and it all went under this young guy's car. The man was still in his car, so luckily she could ask him to move so she could collect the money back. She knocked on his window and asked politely for him to move. He simply stared at her for a second and replied, All right, young lady, with an extremely large grin on his face. At the time, my sister and I could tell something was up and that man was fishy. However, there wasn't much we could do to prove it. He reversed the car ever so slightly. My friend and I went over to pick up this man's money and he was waiting angrily. My sister, however, refused to help collect the money, and that seemed very out of character for her, and I knew something was up. She proceeded to watch us pick up the money, until she stormed over to the man's car parked elsewhere. The man turned on his car and drove away as fast as he could. My sister began yelling different slurs at him. She tells us that the man was taking photos of us from his car while we were leaning over to collect the money. As there was not much we could do, we just continued to complain about the man and how disgusting it was. After this encounter, we realized we started seeing the same white car around us. But we didn't think too much of it and made jokes that it was the creepy guy and he was coming to get us. About a week later, when all three of us returned to town to go to McDonald's, we saw the same homeless man outside, and he seemed to have changed places. As we walked past him, the man then whispered, I pray for you, young girl, and tapped my friend's leg. We all stopped, scared and not sure what to do. But my sister had enough and asked him what he meant by that. He refused to respond, so we continued walking. Later the next evening, I received a FaceTime from my friend, and she seemed pretty shaken up and she swears there's a person's silhouette in her back garden. I told her to show me, and from what I could see, there was. So my sister and I headed straight to her place and told her to lock the doors. We grouped up in her living room and debated on whether to call the police. We decided to stay with her for the night, just in case. As we all woke up in the morning and went outside before heading to school, we saw multiple sticky notes stuck to my friend's fence. It said simple compliments like beautiful and gorgeous, but the ones further down said more creepy things like soft skin. And then we read yellow polka dots. Strangely enough, my friend always had a liking for yellow polka dots. We asked her whether she maybe had a mad ex-boyfriend, but she claimed she hadn't been with someone for two years. We were all scared and confused until my sister brought up considering the drastic increase in that white car and that homeless man saying that to us in town. It could be that creepy man who took photos of us that day, and he may have seen her underwear. We took down the sticky notes after taking a photo of it just in case. I didn't see my friend in school for the next five days. I tried visiting and she let me in and locked the door. All the blinds were shut and her family still weren't back from their vacation. My friend explains how this man returned during the night to put sticky notes on her fence once again spelling polka dots. I told her to call the police but she refused. The next day, I convinced her to come along with me to talk to the homeless man and maybe we could find some answers. And luckily, he was still there. We asked him over and over to explain what he said last time or tell us if he knows about the man in the white car, but he wouldn't say anything. My sister stood at the other side of the road to keep watch. Suddenly, the man in the white car creeps up behind us and my sister came running over and grabbed both of his arms and restrained them behind his back as if she was some kind of police officer. She told the man that she's not afraid to report him to the police and told him to get out of sight and never to disturb us again. The man was able to escape from her hold and got into his car quickly and drove away. We went over to the homeless man who seemed not only scared but guilty. We asked whether he knew that was going to happen, and he was surprisingly honest. 
The man said he was approached a few weeks ago by him, and said if he could help him lure in my friend, he'd pay him six hundred dollars in cash. So the homeless man agreed and got the money. He then said the man called himself Adam J. My friend seemed very shocked about that name. We asked what was going on, and she said Adam J was a kid back in school who kept trying to flirt with her after she rejected him, but that man looked nothing like him. My sister then let the homeless man off with a warning, and we all went back home. Truth is, we never heard whether it was that Adam J. He just vanished in that white car, and we never saw him again.